so good day so today we're going to discuss about uh, some interior uh, spaces so this is a review of what you have learned uh, so far in our design one uh, class okay so first we're going to review about the kitchen so the example here class this one this is what you call an, uh, an elevation of a kitchen okay, as you can see in the elevation you could see the dimensions and interrelationships of the different uh, components okay for example um, you have here the height of the countertop okay, so basically it's around nine uh, 914 millimeters okay then we also have a distance uh, from the countertop to the bottom of the cabinets which is around 457 mm then we have the height of the cabinet I think it's the full height to the ceiling which is around 762 millimeters so there's a lot of things you need to consider in your designing your kitchens for instance in this one you could also see some space allocated for I think this is the microwave this area then we have here for uh, the uh, gas range or electric range or oven so basically the dimensions are stated in the actual practice class you have to consult with your client on the type of appliances that uh, he or she will use uh, in their kitchen okay? then we also have the typical the typical width of an a refrigerator which is uh, 0.813 and a typical height of 1.676 meters okay so if you did your elevation this way you're already on the right track okay but anyway if you got the solution wrong you still have time to improve okay because uh, okay, um, since you are students I think you're bound to make mistakes but what's important is that you correct those mistakes as you move along Okay. Then we have here uh, typical kitchen types. So you have here, I'm going to review the L shape. So this is the work triangle of the L shape. L shape kitchen here. So the sto uh, storage guidelines in a minimum of 18 square feet or 1.67 square meters basic storage plus 0.56 square meters per person served. So this is a typical layout. And the total distance of all three sides of the work triangle should average between 12 uh, linear feet or, or 3.66 meters. So, the total length of the work triangle should be around 3.66 meters. Okay. Then, uh, another one here, we have a U-shaped type of kitchen. You can find here the refrigerator, the oven, and the wash basin. Okay. From, so, from the refrigerator is where you're going to store the food. Then here at the countertop, you're going to chop it, or here. Then after chopping it, you're going to wash it. Then after that, you're going to cook it. Okay. Then uh, here, class, you can uh, find some cabinetry components. Okay. So when doing your kitchen, it's really important that you are uh, very detailed uh, oriented because there's a lot of anthropometric details which could be found. Uh, in your kitchen okay so at the top you have your your upper cabinets then you have your adjustable shelves so why is it adjustable so that uh, you can remove the shelf the shelving if uh, in case you're going to place uh, bigger groceries at the top okay then you have here your backsplash this is a backsplash and you have a drawer also adjustable shelves and you have here door then you have here your base okay um, I think one of the common problems here in the Philippines with regards to your uh, kitchen class is related to the infestation of insects especially in your cupboards or inside your cabinetry because since no light can reach in so that's something that uh, you have to think uh, think as early as now on how to, you're going to solve it. Okay, so I think one solution that came out is the introduction of paint which can kill insects. 
think that's a it could be applied to your kitchen but you could also do something more creative like um, making sure that the back sides are illuminated well okay, then you have here your appliances uh, many appliances uh, have become modular and with uh, uh, within a three inch system example it's 9 inches 12 inches 15 18 21 24 and so forth okay so in a single wall so this is a line of work so there's no triangle so it's linear then we could also do the parallel walls but it should have a minimum of 1.2 meters clearance for at least one person or uh, two people to pass by I think we haven't discussed yet about uh, uh, the design of your uh, bathroom so let's look at this uh, typical bathroom design okay so what's important last uh, when you design your bathrooms is you give consideration to where you're going to place your windows so a bathroom without the ventilation system it will smell bad so the here you have a ventilation system a small one okay then the water closet glass adjacent to it you have space for the uh, toilet paper then here you have a bathtub with a shower okay here you have here a window then do wash basins okay so I think uh, always remember class that when you're designing your master bedroom I think most couples uh, uh, in my own experience as well they wanted to have their own separate uh, wash wash basins Okay, so that you should provide two instead of one. Okay, so I think these are the typical arrangements. This side. Let me show you. So, if the size of your uh, bath or, uh, bathroom is... No, this is a toilet. Size of your toilet is... 0.76 by 1.9 you could have uh, the water closet facing the wash basin if it's around 1.2 by 1.372 and squarish in form uh, you could have it uh, this way but I'm discouraging you class from using this type of door okay so don't use uh, this type of door in your designs then uh, if there's already a requirement for the bathtub you could group the what the water closet and the wash basin together and then the opposite side you can place the bathtub or one thing you could do is uh, place the wash basin separate the bathtub here and then the water closet here or uh, line it this is the water closet the wash basin and then you have your bathtub Okay, so then I think it's prudent that we discuss also about habitable rooms. So ceiling height should not be less than 2.286 for at least 50% of the required area and 50% may be adapted, may be sloped to a minimum height. Okay, so here in the Philippines last in our uh, national building code, the minimum height required for uh, habitable rooms with artificial ventilation is 2.4 meters now if it is naturally uh, ventilated we need that you're going to have uh, windows and you're going to let air circulate inside the room it should have at least a height of 2.7 meters okay so always remember class that you stick to the minimum if there is no other choice if there are other uh, if you are you have other choices always go beyond the standard beyond the minimum so that you can provide your client the best possible service okay then um, also familiarize yourselves with the different sizes
For example, the crib is sized by 1.3 by 0.711. Then you have a twin size bed sized as 0.991 meters by 1.905. Then you have a full double bed which is 1.372 by 1.905 then a queen size bed here 1.5 by 2 meters and a king size uh, 2 by 1.930 so at least last uh, you should have already a basic understanding of the different uh, sizes of beds because uh, these are important especially in designing uh, your bedroom then you could also answer some of the queries of your clients regarding the possible size of their room. Okay. Now another thing class that uh, I want you to familiarize as I have observed in your past dates are the sizes of your garages. So I think some of you provided garages which are very difficult for vehicles to fit inside or even very uh, garages located in such a way that it's difficult for uh, vehicles to move in. So familiarize, familiarize yourselves and uh, uh, research and read. I think I already provided you with a link of uh, some books in architecture which you can read and uh, use as a point of reference. Now in this book, uh, it says that the length of uh, garages will be around 6.6 .6 by 3.4 for one car or the total of around uh, 6 meters for two cars. Okay. So I think that's an okay size. Okay. But then again plus, when you do the sizes of your garages, always ask your client on what uh, type of car they are uh, currently using right now and what type of vehicle do you wish to use in the future so that you could consider uh, these things in advance okay so my uh, reminder for you class is that always remember that the basics that we taught you in anthropometrics and uh, bubble diagram and uh, to call this uh, doing the proximity matrix those are basics that you can use even in higher design so I would like to uh, to call this encourage you to to keep on uh, practicing and doing your uh, bubble diagrams because once you reach higher level design you're going to design more complex spaces especially when you reach your higher years when you're going to have to design hospitals malls stadiums and other uh, large developments uh, even airports okay so the key to design class is that you have to be observant and then you have to have a three-dimensional understanding of the world that you are living in okay